Hello everyone. Eric Ten Hag is reportedly at minimal risk of being sacked by Manchester United, despite the club being well adrift of Champions League qualification, with targets including Gareth Southgate and Julian Nagelsmann, hesitant by the size of the task that awaits at Old Trafford. United have suffered disappointing results in the Premier League of late after Leeds away at Brentford, and Chelsea were wiped out in stoppage time in both games to leave Ten Hag's side with one point from a possible six, as the Bees equalized late last Saturday, before Mauricio Pochettino's side snatched victory from the Reds' hands with two late Cole Palmer strikes in a 4-3 thriller at Stamford Bridge on Thursday. Both results leave United facing an uphill battle to qualify for next season's Champions League ahead of Aston Villa or Tottenham Hotspur, who sit 11 and 9 points clear of United ahead of Sunday's Premier League against Liverpool at Old Trafford. According to the iNews though, Ten Hag is not thought to be under the immediate threat of being sacked at Old Trafford, despite an underwhelming campaign that has seen United finish rock bottom of their Champions League group behind Bayern Munich, Copenhagen and Galatasaray, and knocked out of the Carabao Cup by Newcastle United in November. The report claims that new minority owner Sir Jim Ratcliffe, who acquired a stake in the club last December through his Ineos group, and Sir Dave Brailsford have drawn up a list of possible replacements for Ten Hag, but those shortlisted are lukewarm about the prospect of succeeding the Dutchman due to the monumental task at hand. Names include England manager Southgate and his counterpart Julian Nagelsmann, whose contract with the German national team expires at the end of July. However, it is reported that he is keen to continue with Die Mannschaft beyond this summer's European Championships and therefore could pen an extension. The report adds that there is thought to be very little chance of the long-time linked Zinedine Zidane moving to England while Brighton and Hove Albion's Roberto De Zerbi is reportedly being eyed by Bayern Munich ahead of Thomas Tuchel's departure at the end of the season. Closer to home, it is unclear whether Graham Potter or Brentford's Thomas Frank would be keen to replace Ten Hag at Old Trafford. Ten Hag guided Manchester United to Carabao Cup success and a third-place Premier League finish in the 2022-23 season, his first at Old Trafford. Meanwhile, Manchester United have issues in defense as we head towards Sunday's crucial Premier League meeting with Liverpool. Victor Lindelof and Lisandro Martinez were ruled out for at least a month, two days before Thursday's helter-skelter 4-3 defeat at Chelsea, and two more centre-backs also have fitness issues following the trip to London. Rafael Varane was substituted at half-time for the second game in a row after limping in the closing stages of the first half. The Frenchman was replaced by Johnny Evans, back after missing the Liverpool and Brentford games in March, for the second period, but the 36-year-old could only manage a 21-minute cameo before Willy Camboala had to be called upon. After the game, Eric Ten Hag said it was too early to assess the severity of the pair's problems, but if they cannot return in time for the Merseysiders' visit on Sunday, that would leave Camboala and Harry Maguire as the only natural options in central defense. There are questions over Casemiro's fitness too, as the Brazilian midfielder was also forced off in the second half, but Mason Mount could be pushing for a start after another promising cameo. Scott McTominay is also an option in the engine room, if required, while Sofian Amrabat and Christian Eriksen were unused substitutes in both the Brentford and Chelsea games. Goalkeeper Altai Bayendir was among the replacements in West London too, after recovering from injury, while Ahmad, scorer of the winning goal in the memorable United vs Liverpool Emirates FA Cup quarter-final three weeks ago, returned to the squad following suspension. There has been no further update regarding a trio of longer-term absentees. Anthony Marshall has not featured since December and is still recovering from groin surgery, while Luke Shaw hopes to return from his complaint before the end of the campaign. Tyrell Malaysia is another player sidelined, with the Dutchman yet to feature in the 2023-24 season. Meanwhile, Ian Wright has warned Manchester United are in for another big hiding when Liverpool visit Old Trafford on Sunday and claimed Old Trafford is no longer a fortress.
Misery was the riding theme of emotion for United fans on Thursday evening, as they watched their team's 3-2 lead crumble, with Chelsea producing a comeback for the ages to win 4-3. Cole Palmer scored his first senior hat-trick to secure the Premier League's latest ever comeback, after striking twice after the ninth minute of stoppage time, and Wright believes another defeat is in the making for Eric Ten Hag. Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool travel to the home of their rivals, seeking to keep their place at the top of the Premier League table and avenge their recent FA Cup quarter-final defeat, while United are hoping to avoid another embarrassment. Liverpool inflicted a 7-0 thrashing on United in the Anfield fixture last season, and Arsenal legend, Wright, believes the 13-time Premier League champions could be on the end of another huge defeat. Predicting the weekend result, Wright told his Ringer FC podcast, I fear for Man United. I just feel like Liverpool will be much more focused than they were in that FA Cup game and be even more ruthless. We know United can be ruthless, and Alejandro Garnacho alone is going to be a threat. But Liverpool will want to go there and put them in their place, he added. I worry for United because I can see another big hiding. I could see them getting a good hiding, to be honest. It's not like Old Trafford is a fortress anymore. If Liverpool come and have their heads on, it could be a massive worry for United, he said. Despite his prediction, Wright will be hoping United can do Arsenal a favor by beating Liverpool and giving Mikel Arteta's side the advantage in the title race. Liverpool currently hold a two-point lead over the Gunners and a three-point gain over reigning champions Manchester City, with Klopp dreaming of a second top-flight trophy in his final season at the club. Meanwhile, defeat for United will put Ten Hag's future at the club under even more scrutiny as Sir Jim Ratcliffe and his Ineos team weigh up whether to make a summer managerial change, again and again. Manchester United fans have made their feelings clear on Mason Greenwood. Sir Jim Ratcliffe must listen. After Greenwood was arrested by Greater Manchester Police, but after all charges were dropped in February 2023, he has always denied the allegations, and although United planned to reintegrate Greenwood back into the first team, that was abandoned following intense backlash. Former CEO Richard Arnold received letters from season ticket holders expressing concerns, and a protest group named Female Fans Against Greenwood's Return formed. I think some people will have no choice but to walk away," a member of that protest group, speaking on the condition of anonymity, told the Manchester Evening News in August 2023. The fan group had an End Violence Against Women banner prepared for the opening game of the season against Wolves, and their protest attracted widespread coverage. United decided not to bring Greenwood, who has not been found guilty of any criminal offence, back into the squad. The group condemned the lack of consultation with fans during an in-house investigation into the player that spanned six and a half months. The group spokesman told the men, There had been no consultation process, no discussion process, no engagement with fans. In their mind, this is a footballing decision, not a club decision. However, this goes way beyond football, and we're going to make our voices heard. It's allegedly taken six and a half months for the club's investigation to take place. However, this goes way beyond football, and we're going to make our voices heard. It's allegedly taken six and a half months for the club's investigation to take place. The player in question has been on full pay throughout this period, and fans have been paying for that. So again, it's definitely a fan issue. We've always had really firm leadership and strong management. We've had some key leaders at the club who have taken decisive action, who have known what's best, but the current management structure is letting us down. This goes beyond football. The people who are making these decisions are going to be here for a few years, we've been here for so much longer, and will remain when they leave. I haven't seen either directly or indirectly any match-going fans who don't support us, who might not agree with our methods or some of the messaging but agree that fans should be placed wholeheartedly at the decision-making process.